Welcome to episode four, The Secret Sauce of Weight Loss. Notice how we didn't say the secret to weight loss. We said the secret sauce. So what is it, hun? Would it surprise you that the secret sauce to weight loss is food management and movement, or simply referred to as diet and exercise. Now, diet for us has a negative connotation. Because it's restrictive. It, it, every, I mean, society has evolved to where dieting is you're restricting something from whatever it is you're eating. It's important for us in this episode that we're deliberate in, in how we're actually sharing uh, this piece of information. So why do we say the secret sauce versus the recipe? Well, I mean, the, when we say secret to weight loss, it's, it's not a one size fits all. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, calorie deficit is the main ingredient to weight loss, but everyone's hearing about that right now. We're not gonna beat that dead horse. And so we're giving you the secret sauce, which is, you know, like a good gravy and it ties all the food together and it just, it makes the meal that much more appetizing. Absolutely. <laughs> So there are some things that you may hear whenever you're, you know, whether it be surfing the web or listening to uh, people that you may know in your life that are, are fit. And there's some common analogies that are often thrown around, such as abs are made in the kitchen and not in the gym. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Abs are made in the kitchen and not in the gym. It's really simple. Uh, when you talk about food management, right, for us, you may use the word diet, we say food management because we, we have played the yo-yo diet game. Mm -hmm. We have gone up and down in our weight over many, many years. And so what we've learned is that diet is a bad word and it's more about a lifestyle change. However, once you start getting that lifestyle change implemented in your life mm -hmm. and you're seeing the results of your efforts, it really turns from a lifestyle change into uh, how am I consuming my food in order to give me the energy that I need in order to perform my workouts for us? But it could be just, you know, how do I chase my kids around a soccer field all day long? Or how do I get them back and forth to school as well as uh, the other things that I have in my life that are, are, you know, require you to not just be totally exhausted by lunchtime. So, so it's just another way of looking at the word diet and the word exercise. And so we're just giving you a different perspective on it to yeah. maybe help a little bit. Yeah. Help you reshape the lens in which you see yourself yeah. and your, your food management. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, we like to take and say there's an 80%, 80-20 rule, right? That's what I always say, yeah. And so it's 80% you know, food management, 20% mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. So that's key because when anybody starts a transformation journey, almost 100% of the time, what I hear is I want to lose weight. And so the very first thing that they do is they try to run out and get a gym membership in order to get movement in. Mm -hmm. But it starts at home. Yeah. People actually do it backwards. People mm -hmm. think I need to get movement and before I change my diet and I need to have some kind of activity where I'm, I'm burning calories, uh, before I ever even discuss what I'm eating and putting in my body. People have a tendency to, start backwards yeah, yeah. They, they have a tendency to start watching what they eat but really mm -hmm. their their focus is on i need to get to the gym and get movement versus i need to clean up my diet at home and that brings a good point i was listening to a podcast the other day where they said that exercising is a horrible way to lose weight initially um and i won't go into the details of what they said but it's basically the premise of when you start working out you get hungrier and you want to eat more so dieting or managing your food in the beginning initially can have a you know a reverse effect on you and so i'm always the a big advocate of you don't have to buy anything you don't even have to buy a gym membership when you first start just start it at home in the kitchen and move more and change the way you're eating so let us talk a little bit about food management first uh and the concept of dieting versus lifestyle management and the various other buzzwords that you may hear. So a calorie is a unit of energy. 
right? So when we say, or you hear, it's calories in versus calories out, or abs are made in the kitchen, it's basically telling you that you need to understand the energy that you're putting into your body, AKA the calories you're putting in your body, uh, versus the calories that you are expelling from your body through daily movement. Mm -hmm. And I'm specifically using the word movement versus activity. Yes. Because movement occurs the moment that you wake up and you get out of bed and you brush mm -hmm. your teeth, the, you get ready for work, you go to work, or whatever your routine is, all that is movement. Mm -hmm. If you have a sedentary job where you sit at your desk, when you stand up to walk to the bathroom or to walk to lunch, or maybe you, like Jenny, uh, have a rising desk, which are very popular, and you just want to stand up. Right. That is movement. Right. That is activity. And so when you're talking about food management, it's calories in, energy in, mm -hmm. versus how much energy you're expelling out with movement or activity. And there's a NEAT acronym for it. It's actually NEAT. And I don't know what it stands for on the top of my head, but I'm sure he's going to put it down below. It's the amount of steps and movement you get in. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's two types of uh, movement that have become very popular mm -hmm. due to the invention and the introduction of fitness watches. For me, I really like my fitness watch. It gives me the metrics that I need. And so I'm able to look at my active energy as well as my resting energy. Even though fitness bands and watches are notoriously inaccurate, uh, I still use mine in, in that manner. For uh, data points. For data points. I used it for the amount of steps and for my time in running, I would always beat it, but I didn't use it for calories burned. Because she would track the running piece of it and the actual number of steps. Where I'm quite different, I am very addicted to all of my energy expenditure for my active right. energy and my resting energy. So I'm gonna stop there because I could go down a rabbit hole with this. And I don't want to. What I'm saying is that people uh, generally have some kind of smartwatch, mm -hmm. which has a health feature that tracks whether it be activity or movement. And I think that's a good way on the start of any health transformation journey is that you have to have a baseline. And so you have to have some kind of barometer about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And we like to tell those that ask us, where do I start? It's really simple. Start with tracking what you're eating. Don't make any changes. Don't make any changes into what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Don't make any changes by going to a gym and trying to get more movement. The very first week or two of your fitness transformation journey should just be about learning how to hold yourself accountable to what you're actually putting in your mouth and consuming. And when I say that consuming, the consumption piece, it is both food, as well as beverage. Mm -hmm. So whether that be alcohol or juices or sodas or sweeteners in your coffee, everything has a caloric value to it. And so you need to make sure that you're understanding and tracking what those calories or those energy sources in mm -hmm. so that you can start gauging as to when we talk about movement, how much movement are you doing to burn off the energy you're putting in? But going back to the whole fitness tracker piece of it, I'm a big advocate that I don't think you have to buy anything except a food scale um, to if you wanted to start the you know lifestyle journey of losing weight, whether it be fitness related or just losing weight in general. Like you don't need a tracker. If you get one, that's great. Um, but just a food scale. And if you don't know how many steps you get a day, then just be conscious and get up and move more. <laughs> but um, yeah, at the end of the day, just track your food, start weighing it, um, and holding yourself accountable for actually how much you eat, and then just move more consciously. So the next step of that is the, the, the normal question of, well, how do I track my food? There are plenty of apps and there are popular apps that you can use to track in a variety of different ways. So any way that you can track your food, whether it be a notebook, whether it be an notebook. app, you have the ability to take and track what you eat. And what you're trying to do is learn how to take and look at portion sizes, look at nutrition uh, Content. labels, yeah, labels. Uh, and you're not going to be an expert when you first come out. So the idea is start learning about how to track your food and use an app, use a notebook, one way or the other you got to start the process. And then 
the final thought for us really is uh, for this episode is recognizing your triggers. Mm -hmm. right? You know, we said a couple weeks ago that uh, motivation is a very short fuse, and sometimes motivation can only get you out the door and Maybe to your car door. Yeah, yeah. I think the key here is once you start, take it slow. There is no. Um, your journey is Road your map. journey. Yeah. At your own pace, for sure. Yeah. It, as Jenny just said, it's you don't need to buy anything. Mm -hmm. You don't need any no. subscriptions. That includes a, or memberships. That includes a gym membership. Mm -hmm. In order for you to take and start your journey. So, what were the key takeaways that we we're trying to pull today? Uh, abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah, and just looking at words differently. Looking at the word diet, which we all know has a negative meaning to it to managing your food or food motivation or food management, excuse me, and looking at exercise as just movement. I mean, cause you don't need to quote unquote exercise. You just need to move more. So mental motivation is again, figuring out your why and helping and hoping that helps you change the perspective on at least these two words. And as we go down in future episodes, hoping to give you a different perspective on other things as well. Yeah, I mean, it's again, the name of the episode is The Secret Sauce of Weight Loss, mm -hmm. and it's because we're, we're trying to give you just the sauce right now, mm -hmm. not, 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 not the whole recipe, just the sauce. And yeah, because it's every, it, losing weight's different for everyone. Like, obviously what worked for us isn't gonna work for a lot of people, yeah. so. Yeah, there, I don't care what anybody <laughs> says online, there's not a one size fits all oh, for no, anything. Not, right, don't right. go buy specialized no. equipment or protein no. shakes and protein powders and. Just a food scale, uh, uh, that's just, all I ever say. <laughs> just need a food scale and, and sit in your own understanding of food. Yeah, but I will add a caveat. If you're one of those people, like I know a lot are, where if weighing your food is a, you know, a trigger, <laughs> then, you know, learning portion sizes, and they make great little cups for that, so. Yeah, yeah we actually have a friend of ours who, uh, she's very OCD about her food management uh, since she started this journey, and, it's funny. A couple of them, actually. Yeah, it's, well, but it's funny watching one of our particular friends uh, because she literally went and bought a small scale that fits in her purse for the purposes of uh, using when she goes out and dines out with her husband uh, so that she can weigh both She's his and her food. Too, yeah. yeah, they're doing mm -hmm. an, an amazing job, as yeah. well as small little serving cups. Oh, I know. It's like, so, so she can weigh her eggs. sauce. Yeah, they're so adorable. So she literally can say, I need only X, Y, Z of the sauce mm -hmm. that goes on my chicken. And mm -hmm. she will have everything separated uh, at ordering. Mm -hmm. And then she'll pour it in there and she'll measure it so that she knows exactly what portion size that her and her husband are getting. Yes. Now, I don't necessarily think that I myself would be that regimented uh, by oh, going Oh, when out. I start prep here soon, that'll be me when we go out to eat. Yeah, if we even go out to eat. If we do. Please. If we even go out to eat. Because <laughs> because there, there, there are too many other uh, Unknowns. Uh, triggers yeah. <laughs> at the restaurant. That's true. Uh, that, right. And it would be my triggers that would take in. And I think, you know, you have your own triggers, but it's my triggers that prompt your triggers. Because oh, for sure. Jenny tells me all the time, oh, I order so much better than her. Mm -hmm. And so if we order food, she will definitely take and, and usually have uh, 90% of the time, the first bite off my food before I ever get into it. <laughs> and so I don't want to order something and then trigger you. So, yeah. but, uh, you know, God bless our friends who can get that o OCD about it. Uh, it is a beautiful thing yes, for, for her and uh, anybody else who does it. It's, you got to figure out what works for you. And this works mm -hmm. for her. This mm -hmm. is how she holds herself mm -hmm. accountable. This is how she's able to help her husband be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Because again, it is a different perspective, perspective of food management from each individual. Yes. And again, there's no one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So uh, the takeaways really have been more about looking at diet as food management, mm -hmm. looking at uh, exercise as movement, looking at food and calories because they're on every menu now as a unit of energy, energy. Uh, yeah. versus being you know anything more than that and then 
you know, we will dive deeper as we kind of go uh, week to week about what uh, what does the gym anxiety look like or things that are so. And for those, I like you just mentioned gym anxiety. I've been doing this almost three years now and I still get gym anxiety. So it it's normal, it's okay, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so one last thing um, I did want to add, if we are, because we are starting this and we do have our own, you know, what we think we want to talk about, we want to hear from you guys, y'all, sorry. I'm, trying to be all <laughs> formal, uh, formal. <laughs> if y'all have any questions or topics that you want us to yeah. try to answer or if we have experience with it we will if we don't we'll flat out say we we can't talk on it because we don't have any experience so if you you y'all have any questions or comments you know please send them to us and you can even email dm or however social media works to send us your questions and and comments we would really appreciate that any kind of feedback we would love yeah absolutely i, I agree 100 percent. i'd like to have anything to add to that just please like and subscribe please subscribe and more importantly please share yes. the only way that we are able to get out there and grow our message is through your generosity um, and sharing us with your friends too but more importantly thank you for your time and i wish everybody i hope you'll have a great day